hello and welcome to my video it's moshman here and today i'm going to read and analyze the poem on the grasshopper and cricket by john cates it reads as follows the poetry of earth is never dead when all birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new moon maid that's the grasshopper he takes the lead in summer luxury. He has never done with his delight. For when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The poetry of earth is seizing never. On a lone winter evening, when the frost has wrought a silent from the stove, there shrills the cricket song in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness have lost the grasshoppers among these crazy hills so let's look at the summary of the poem the poem on the grasshopper and cricket is an italian sonnet Cates uses to celebrate the beauty of nature he pays particularly he pays particular attention to the grasshopper and cricket by praising them for producing the music of nature. The octave focuses on the grasshopper as an agent of summer, while the sestet looks into the role played by the cricket. Both these insects survive the harshness weather to fly around producing their buzzing sound. Both the octave and the sestet open with a declaration that poetry of earth is not dead poetry of earth is not dead meaning that it is eternal then let's look at the type and form of the poem the poem on the grasshopper and cricket is 14 lines and it is known as a sonnet this sonnet has two parts the octave which is the first eight lines and the sestet which is the the last six lines this makes it an italian sonnet the rhyme theme is A B B A A B B A C D E C D E. So now let's analyze the poem line by line. So with this sonnet, the speaker celebrates the continuous beauty of nature. As a romantic poem, Kate praises nature and its capacity to bring joy to people. He believes that love and nature are interconnected. He feels that nature offers love and joy. And so women must, must be receptive of that. So the picture below represents the beauty of nature. We, can, we are able to see the beauty of nature that our poet is talking about. So let's analyze the first eight line, which is the octave. The poetry of earth is never dead. The speaker refers to the sound made by the nature. When he says the poetry of earth is never dead. Then let's continue. Line number two says that when all birds are faint with the hot sun, when they are they they, they feel dizzy by the hot sun, the look we can the sun is represented by the first picture. And hide in cooling trees. The second picture represents a, a bed hidden in a cooling tree. A voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new moon maid. It's music, music made by the grasshopper. Then in line number five, the poet tells us uh, the where the poem where the in line number five the poet tells us where the sound comes from. That is the grasshopper, which is the, 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 the insect in picture number four. He takes the lead in summer's luxury, by the words summer luxury. The, the speaker is talking about the beauty of nature, represented by picture number five. He has never done with delight. For when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. 
that means when the when the grasshopper is satisfied he has never done with delight when the grasshopper is satisfied he rest beneath some pleasant weed pleasant weed uh, represented by a uh, picture number the last picture picture number six then let's look at the the summary of the 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 the, the, the octave in summer when the sun is too hot the birds find it difficult to keep their root routine and find comfort in the shelter of trees the grasshopper flies from one place to another and one continuously hears a buzzing sound from all over the meadows the grasshopper will not stop singing when the grasshopper is satisfied he rests at ease under the weed so let's look at the step. the poetry of earth is seizing never by this line line number nine the, the the poet emphasizes line number one then continue and say on a lone winter evening when the frost has brought a silence on a lone winter evening when uh, there is frost represented by picture number one from the stove there shrills the cricket song then during winter we we we, we, we during winter we use a stove to, to 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 produce heat then at that stove there is a cricket that produces a sound from the stove there shrills the cricket song in the stove there is a near the stove there is a cricket that produces a sound so and continue and said in warmth increasing ever in the stove there is a in the stove there is a cricket that produces a sound in warmth increasing ever and since to one in drowsiness have lost and since to one in drowsiness have lost it is represented by picture number three and four where a person is half asleep and half awake so the grasshoppers amongst some grazy hills but the sister is talking about the cricket but here just because uh, people can hear the sound correctly clearly then they think that maybe it is a grasshopper the grasshopper and the cricket will survive the harshest of weather even when the other animals succumb to it when the other animals feel faint the grasshopper will not for the grasshopper summer is a time of joy in summer animals are excited and outgoing the grasshopper will sing to provide music to nature when winter comes and animals are hiding the cricket will take over from the grasshopper and sing to the world earth so these true animals key the poetry of earth this sonnet describes the physical world and its natural beauty it is about the communication animals have with nature the natural sound are the voices of nature and nature speaks to us through them the second one is hope so this sonnet is about hope the poetry of earth symbolizes beauty and endurance like the poetry of earth hope does not die conditions may be harsh but they can never be overcome but they can be overcome another one is immortality one of the theme of this sonnet one of the theme of this sonnet is the eternal delight of the beauty of nature the sonnet's message is that beauty of nature endurance of life and love of poetry will never die then let's look at figurative language the first one is repetition brought by line one and line number nine the poet uses a declaration in the first line this declaration state that the poetry of earth is forever and never ending is repeated in line six another one is imagery the poetry of earth line number one 
nature makes sound so the earth is made up of different sound these sounds come from calls of bees and the buzz of insects this sounds comes from calls of the bees and the buzz of insects these sounds are the voice of the earth which is represented as the breathing of air another one is personification that is found in line number 10 and 11 the frost has wrought a silence frost is personified as a person who brings silence you also have contrast the cricket song is linked to that of the grasshopper both songs are the part of nature's persistence and loving force we also have alliteration new moon made there is a repetition of the m sound in the sentence we also have metaphor in the octave the sound of the grasshopper represent summer while the sound of the cricket in the sestet represent winter then let's look at the tone and mood in the poem we have joyful and merry the sounds made from the calls of the bees and the buzz of the insects create a celebratory mood so we have reached the end of our video Please consider subscribing for future uploads.